I'll show you how the Channels panel works in Affinity Photo and demonstrate some of its uses. It's available by default on the user interface next to the Layers panel on the right here. At the top of the panel, you will see listed the Document Bit Depth and Color Profile. Directly underneath, you have the Composite Channels. These represent the overall document composition. For example, if you had a document made up of multiple layers, the final result seen on screen is called the composite. Since we're in RGB, there are red, green, blue, and alpha channels listed here. If the document was in lab or CMYK, their appropriate individual channels would be shown here instead. Directly underneath, we have background red, green, blue, and alpha. These are channels belonging to the currently selected layer. If I move back across to the Layers panel, you will see I only have one layer in this document called Background, which is the image information. If I add an adjustment layer, for example, a white balance adjustment, then move back to the Channels panel, this now changes, and we will see White Balance Adjustment Alpha listed. Adjustment and filter layers do not contain color channel data, only alpha. I'll delete that white balance adjustment, and the background layer will be selected again. Let's look at isolating composite channel information. Clicking on one of the composite channels will enter a grayscale preview of that channel. This disables visibility and editing for the other channels, meaning you can use tools and filters in isolation on specific channels. You can easily reset and get back to a full color preview using the reset button up here. The edit buttons can be disabled separate to the visibility buttons, so I could retain a full color image, but choose to disable editing for the green, blue, and alpha channels. Now any tools or filters I use will only affect the red channel. For example, if I go to the filters menu and apply a Gaussian blur filter, as I bring the radius slider up, only the red channel information will be affected, creating a pseudo chromatic aberration or fringing effect. I'll apply and commit this filter. Then I'll use the reset button to return to editing all channels. Across on another example, I'll explore some of the selection options we have on this channels panel. Right clicking any of the composite channels allows you to load that channel information to a selection. For example, I could right click Composite Blue and choose Load to Pixel Selection. Then I could right click Composite Red and subtract it from the active selection. And finally, I could right click Composite Green and intersect it with the selection. So with this selection active, I'll add a curves adjustment using Command M on Mac, Control M on Windows. Then I can deselect with Command D on Mac, Control D. On Windows. Now, if I add a node to the curves graph and start to push it up, you'll see the adjustment is masked to a very specific selection of color tones. I'll create another node down here to add some strong contrast. On the channels panel, we can see the curves adjustment alpha, which is masked to that selection I just created. I can right click this alpha channel and save it as a spare channel which then appears in the bottom channel list. This allows you to reuse this channel data at any time by right-clicking it. You can load it to a selection or apply it to the selected layer's alpha channel. To demonstrate this, I'll right-click the Curves Adjustment Alpha channel and choose Fill. This now makes the Curves Adjustment Alpha completely white, so it is affecting all channel data equally. I can then right-click on the spare channel and choose Load to Curves Adjustment Alpha, and the Curves Adjustment will once again be masked. Active selections can be stored as spare channels too. I'll select the Selection Brush Tool from the Tools panel here, then increase the brush width using the right square bracket key, and just click drag to create a rough selection of the blue tit's body. I'll then refine this quickly by choosing Refine on the Context Toolbar. The edge detail will automatically be matted, so I'll just click Apply, and I now have my foreground selection 
of the subject. So on the Channels panel, I'll right click Pixel Selection down here and create a spare channel from it. I'll then right click the spare channel and choose Rename. I'll call this Foreground. Then I can invert the selection. I could use the keyboard shortcut, which is listed here on the Select menu, but the Channels panel also has a useful button here to quickly achieve this. I then have the background selected, so I'll right click Pixel Selection and create another spare channel. Then I'll rename this to Background, and finally, I'll deselect. Now I might create an HSL shift adjustment. To quickly add this, I can use Command U on Mac, Control U on Windows. Before doing anything else, I'll right click the background spare channel and load it to the HSL shift adjustment alpha. Now I can bring the saturation shift down on the adjustment dialog and it will gradually desaturate the background detail, leaving the subject alone. Finally, I'll add a Curves Adjustment, right-click the Foreground Spare Channel, and load it to the Curves Adjustment Alpha. Now I can manipulate the Curves Graph to add more contrast to the subject. I have to be careful with this, as too much separation can look unnatural and obvious. Moving across to the Layers panel, I can quickly click-drag on the Visibility icons to hide the two adjustments then show them again, so you can appreciate the difference that can be achieved by separating foreground and background detail with masking. Now I'll show you how to create grayscale layers and mask layers from channel information. On this document, I'll select the background pixel layer, then move back to the channels panel. I can right click one of the layer channels here, such as the blue channel, which is quite dark and has less contrast. Then choose create grayscale layer. Back on the Layers panel, I now have a grayscale pixel layer comprised of the blue channel information. I could experiment with the layer opacity to gradually blend the grayscale effect back in, but the opportunities open up further when using blending options. Scrolling through the blend modes here, I might settle on Hard Light, then bring the opacity down to 50%. Finally, on this last document here, I'll first select the background pixel layer. Then, on the channels panel, I'll right click background red and create a mask layer from it. You can see the mask currently sitting as a parent layer in the layer stack. I'll go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and add a Brightness Contrast adjustment. Then I'll click drag this mask layer and offer it to the thumbnail of the adjustment layer and release the mouse button. This will now mask the adjustment with the red channel information. If I move the brightness slider down and the contrast slider up, its effect is being restricted by the mask, allowing me to reduce the overall glare and brightness from all the small light sources in the image. I can quickly expand the brightness contrast adjustment and hide the mask so you can see what effect the brightness contrast adjustment would have if it was not being masked with that red channel information. I'll show the mask again to enable it. And there we go. That was a comprehensive look at the channels panel in Affinity Photo. Don't forget that if you use Affinity Publisher, you can access the photo persona within it and use all of this functionality with your publications as well. Thank you for watching.